Viking Talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North at ScoreNorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. Good to add today in practice. I was a little frustrated with uh, with the way I finished up, but um, uh, we made some plays early as an offense, which is good to see. And uh, you'd like to think that you'd rather make the mistakes now, learn from them, and and start to um, you know tighten the screws as we get closer and closer. But um, uh, you know, today had a little different feel to it in a good way in terms of prepping for the real thing. So uh, um, good day's work, and uh, he's got to keep stacking them up. He is. Tighten the screws. Old Kirky boy, just testing the limits. That's how I'm going to go. uh, phrase what happened yesterday. That two-minute, and we're just reading the reports because uh, we have not been able to send Judd back to practice yet <laughs> with his I'm, post-surgery condition. Damn it. I can't believe but. I missed this one. Defense Three dominated picks? the offense in the scrimmage yesterday. Three picks by Kirk. A couple yeah, pass the, breakups. The Rough but day. Listen, you want the defense to be better, and so that's all. I'm, I'm going to take it as good news that the defense is taking steps forward here, and the offense will it, will figure it out. So it point. sounds like Zadarius Smith was a monster. Oh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. this, this to me is probably of all of the reports I saw about the quote unquote scrimmage. Zadarius Smith, I guess, had had two. Would be sacks and was absolutely in on a ton of plays. Things I believe you the love word was ob- to see. I believe the word was obliterating offensive linemen. That's such good news. Obliterating man, ob- if that back ob- holds up, obliterating football. If that, do you think September 11th, his former team, who basically just said, you know what, you're probably done. Oh, he's ready to go. He could be in 12's grill all day. Yeah. Ugh. And this right is coming up. from a guy that's not on on the Kool Aid necessarily, but you know. Again, it's all about before I die. Uh, that's right. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die here. The show is presented by our friends at TCL, one of the world's best-selling consumer electronics brands. They have a new lineup of award-winning TVs delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution, all at an affordable cost. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL and learn more at TCL.com. Uh, for those of you wondering, we've gotten some questions here because you know, a lot of you see the photos of the uh, Before I Die shirts and Purple Daily hats, which Judd is wearing uh, both right now on camera on the YouTube channel. Where can I get those? Uh, We had a week-long pop-up shop early in the month. It is closed now. We will bring another pop-up shop back at some point during the season, and uh, we'll keep you posted on your opportunity to to, to buy some some swag, some merch here from the show. Hoodies. I want hoodies next. Yeah, I wanted hoodies earlier in the month, but... uh, yeah, you know, it was summer, and so we'll we'll oh, yeah. we'll do hoodies in the fall for sure. So, all right, feedback Friday here on Purple Daily. Let's start with Fast EGA in the YouTube comment section. You can also hit us up in the uh, Score North app. There's a feedback tab at the bottom of that. And Fast EGA on YouTube says, "Could Kellen Mond end up being a Tony Romo situation? Romo was crazy raw his first few years." If Mon does make the 53 and sits, who knows in a year? So you know, answer that however you want to. I mean, is is there still something salvageable about Kellen Mond now that they've conceded that QB2 wasn't on the roster? So let's go back to uh, the reports that we got from TCL yesterday and something I found to be at least Interesting. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it means a decision's been made, but I do think that it's uh, it's worth pointing out. Sean Mannion took all the second team reps. Kellen Mond took zero. Mullins took z- zero as well, but he's new to the system, and so like I, I right. still think that, that he is going to be. I firmly believe he is going on September 11th to be the backup to Kirk. But you at least have to take it as an interesting factor that they removed Kellen Mond, who has been in the offense all training camp, from drills completely that involved. The second team. Uh, I'm beginning to think we're back to what what I said before. Uh, he performed pretty well in the first preseason game, which is I'm beginning to think at very best he might be a practice squad guy. Like I thought they might keep, keep him as a, a three, and after the first preseason game, I suggested that. But I think with the struggles in the San Francisco hmm. game, cu- uh, coupled with the struggles that you know I talked about extensively from practices, Phil. Um, I get the question. I get the point. I thought that there might be a point in time where that's a possibility. But when you have a scrimmage that, like the Vikings did, and it's very clear that the plan is to play none of the key um, position or skill position players on Saturday in Denver, 
Um, to not play Mond at all as the second team guy, I think at least has to be pointed out. Yeah, I mean, in just back to the original question here of, hey, Tony Romo was raw, and and so could could Kellen Mond just kind of sit like Tony Romo did and learn. And in general, I hate using outliers as comparisons for what should happen. Right. right. Well, Tony Romo sat for a couple of years, and therefore, or. Tony Romo was undrafted, so why can't this other? Tom Brady was a six-round draft pick. Well, yeah, but most other quarterbacks who fall in those categories of undrafted, six-round, sit for a year, whatever, um, you know, it doesn't doesn't work out for them. So is there a chance that if he sits for a couple of years, things could click? Now, Tony Romo in 2004 was, I think, the Cowboys' third-string quarterback behind Vinny Testaverde and Drew Henson, if you guys remember Drew Henson. The multi <laughs> he was here athlete. for a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. Or the Vikings for a heartbeat. And so he did. They just, you know, they had the luxury of, all right, we got a veteran, we got, and we have another young guy that we believe in at the time, and we can kind of sit Romo. Romo didn't actually play in an NFL game as a... He might have been a holder before he played as a quarterback, and then he was both in 2006. But he didn't start an NFL game at quarterback until he was 26 years old in 2006 and then immediately became this just wonderful improvisational sort of diet Brett Favre quarterback with the Cowboys. So, my God, if Kellen Mond had a Tony Romo run in him at some point, rejoice for the future of the Minnesota Vikings, but I am not quite ready to to go that far. I think there's a far... Uh, better chance right now with what we're seeing that the Vikings attempt to identify and draft a quarterback in the 2023 draft. Yeah. Uh, Black Spine on YouTube says, did we have no other choice other than to get a backup quarterback who doesn't raise the water level at all? I don't get it. We're still totally screwed if Cousins can't play for more than like two games. All right. This is a tough question because, yes, if Cousins is lost for an extended period period of time you're probably and I will use the word probably in a lot of trouble that being said I never suggested that they go out and get like a starting caliber guy that could like there was never in my mind going to be a conversation of oh my god you just obtained so and so and now Kirk's job might be in jeopardy Mm -hmm. Um, I have zero problem with this move and I like it so I get the question I get the point my whole thing was I don't think Mannion or Mond in a regular season game, and we got a sample of this, obviously, late in the season last year in Green Bay, are capable of moving the football. Mullins is. But I was never saying, you know, that if Kirk gets hurt, you should get get a guy that can replace him for an extended period. Now, the last point, though, is this. Nobody thought Case Keenum could do it. And he did. And for that year, he was marvelous. Yeah, Mullins has a far better chance, in my opinion, of of tripping his way into a Keenum type year than than Mond or Mannion certainly did. If if you lose Kirk for let's just call it four games, and I don't I don't know where that'd be in the schedule. Let's just say it's four games. I feel a lot better. The Vikings can go. Let's even just say it's two and two in those games. Let's just say it's two and two. Agreed. Nick Mullins gives you a chance to salvage the ship and not completely shipwreck, for the lack of a better word, the ship. Um, if, if he's in there over Sean Mannion or Kellen Mond. If it's Sean Mannion or Kellen Mond, I, I'm assuming the team's going to go 0-4 in those games. Even with the yeah. weapons, even with the defense being what it is. Uh, Nick Mullins has been there, done that, has had some really good games in his career too. So he can salvage the ship. I feel comfortable if he has to step in in a pinch and play there. Well, and then let's 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 just make up a scenario here. Let's just uh, let me pull up their schedule because you don't you don't know when this is going to ideally Kirk just stays healthy for the whole season and and just like he has all the time. But let's say let's see here. Maybe you got your first six games. Let's say Kirk gets hurt uh, that Sunday game against the Cowboys. You, You beat the Cowboys at home, but Kirk gets hurt in that game. It's a short week turnaround to New England. And but he's he's going to miss the next four games. All right. You're six and four after ten games beating Dallas, and now Kirk is out for the next month. Oh my God! Can you hang on? You're 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 second place in the division, but you're in wild card position. You're six and four. I would even argue, Dex, if he if Nick Mullins can come in and go one and three in that situation. All right, you got New England, the Jets, the Lions, the the Colts. Can you beat the Jets at home? 
and then just get just get to the last three weeks of the season. Now you're seven and seven after going one and three, and then you got to win out against the Giants, and then you got to have Kirk come back and beat the Packers or something, right? Like going right. one and three over a one month stretch could even help. Well, so and and to my point, Mannion and Mond, in my opinion, cannot move the football. Like that's that is a pathetic thing to say. But we saw it in Green Bay. Who could move the football? I'm talking about completing passes of more than 10 yards, right? I'm talking about taking the offense and allowing O'Connell to at least keep it a semblance of of itself when Kirk is playing. And I really think that what we saw in training camp and going back to the game against the Packers, what we saw meant that the offense would have to be almost entirely stripped down. Because they know what they want to do. But neither of them can do it. So, so I am just I just want somebody that can get the ball in Jefferson's hands, fifteen yards down the field. And I don't know that Sean Mannion can in a regular season game. So. Slade Western via YouTube says I had COVID twice, and like most people, I moaned and complained just a tiny fraction of the amount Phil has. How much sympathy has one does one grown man need? <laughs> <laughs> also, maybe next time, have the balls to tell the handkerchief guy to stay in his own seat. Well, that's a whole nother story. All right, tough guy. Like the last part, I I wouldn't phrase it like that, but I agree. Like you should have told that guy, no, dude, this I ain't agree. happening. I this ain't have. happening. Lesson learned. Yeah. Slade I, Western. Right, I bet right, Slade, somebody... we- Slade Western rolls out of that plane with... He's got spurs. He's got, yeah. He's got he's his, got guys he's, by their collars. He's a U.S. <laughs> Marshal. All right, guy. Tough he guy. Doesn't leave, he doesn't leave a note on a neighbor's door about a dog. He knocks on that door. He is the one. No, who he knocks. knocks the door down. Yeah, he not he, is he the knocks one who the door down right. and comes in and beats you up. Yeah. Take Tyler Vinny. Tyler Lair via the Score North app says, "Hey, just wanted to say thank you guys for reinvigorating my fandom for the Vikings." I'm 25 years old, a huge Minnesota sports and Iowa Hawkeye, uh, Northern Iowa Panthers fan. Nice. Safe to say I have had my share of heartbreak. And last year after the Lions loss, I was done and disgusted with this team. Then I found Score North and have listened to every day since. You guys have helped me realize my fandom again. Wow, dude, that's pretty cool. Because you're a true fan. Yeah, you can this be is mad what and disgusted been, and this still... Is- This is what we've been talking about. It's not fair. It's not fair that so many entities in this town make passionate fans feel guilty. And then they sort of punt. And they're like, well, I guess I'm not a good fan. You're a great fan. There was a major executive for a local sports and media company a few months ago during wild season that jumped on Twitter and called people crap fans for being upset at the wild, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't that what happened? Yes. Called them crap fans for for not like you need to keep your belief. If you don't, if, if you're you know if you're disloyal to the, t- it's like this. Mm-hmm. You can be frustrated with your favorite team. My God. But that's how fans should be. Like I love the passion, and, and I will say say this: the biggest disservice being done, <laughs> in my opinion, is is people who are probably eighteen to thir- thirty because they're not from the Moss years, like. God bless them, and and Moss brought in a lot of truly great fans. But I feel like that era was more a pie in the sky. Let's all, you know, it's the Vikings, it's great. And I feel like young fans now, to their credit, are more discerning, yeah. and that they're more passionate in in that they get mad about things, but they actually blame the team. That does not make you a bad fan. That makes you a great fan. Thank you. So, you know, so Tyler continues. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know why I kept cheering for this damn team, and it's because, like you, I want them to win the GD Super Bowl before I die. Thanks to your yeah, show, I've never man. been more excited for a season than this. So, right, Tyler, Pop appreciate you, dude. Pop the shirt, baby. Uh, Jake via the Score North app says, not sure if Chill Boys is still partnered with you. Uh, they are, and they will be back in September. Sometimes companies you know, have different schedules throughout the year. I got mine if, out right now. Me too, baby. Rocking these things sure. down here. Sure. Who does? Because if they are, here is your best advertising for them. I just learned I cannot wear anything else anymore. I ran out without washing and wore regular underwear. Didn't last. Too hot in my office. Currently commando. <laughs> all right. Well, it's either chill boys or commando for, for Jake. So, yeah. I agree. I threw out all my non-chill boys. I, we'll start I, I talking not, about them more later. 
I have not worn a non-chill boys underwear since. Oh, it's life changing, mm -hmm. as we said mm -hmm. before. Should Absolutely life changing. Uh, Surly is life changing. Oh, God, as well. Yes. Thank God. That's exactly right, Phil. And you know what? It is. And and despite the fact that fall is coming, football is here. It remains, folks, one very important thing, and that is the summer of Surly, and that means with the weekend here, it's furious time, it's supreme time. But you know what I want to talk about right now? I want to talk about the magic of a beer called Logic Bomb. So Chip Scoggins, who is, who, as Dex can attest to, is as loyal to furious as anyone I've ever met, said, you converted me and my wife. And that we are now not just a furious household, but a logic bomb household. That is high praise. And that is because it is such a good beer that I urge you, if you have not tried it, try a logic bomb this weekend available at, uh, I believe, all of your favorite stores, Surly Brewing. You know what? They always do it right. Uh, also, uh, Aquaside has been helping a lot of Score North and Purple Daily listeners keep their lakeside areas clean and less murky, Dex. Ugh, yeah, there's nothing worse than when you're enjoying a nice summer day. Maybe you got a nice surly out there and you're running off on the dock and you jump in the water and you step in that lassie lake weed and muck. It's just, it's it's the worst. You don't want to do that. So get some Aquaside pellets if your lakeshore has that. Uh, it's a do-it-yourself product. They walk you through how to use it, and it's safe and registered with the EPA and DNR. Uh, they're located in the Twin Cities in White Bear Lake in the North Metro, but you can get their product on their website, Aquaside.com. Go to Aquaside.com to learn more. Uh, before we get into a couple more here, I just have kind of a random question that we haven't addressed much this week. Any Mr. Mankato updates or thoughts off that second preseason game that you sort of half watched from the emergency room? Judge? I watched the first half before I before I was uh, knocked out. Man, was that impressive! Oh boy. Um, you know, I didn't see enough of the second half because I didn't get to watch it. That I, I would actually be curious if you guys came away with some impressions from it. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to think back to see if there was any like real needle moving things. And I don't know, man. I think um I think at this point we're gonna find out a lot more in this third preseason game about who desperately wants to make the team and who wants to show that they're NFL caliber on film here, but uh, who's your, your your wide receiver, uh, Tristan uh, Jackson? Uh, Jackson, yeah, yeah. He had I, a couple nice little routes in that second game, but he didn't. You know, the productivity wasn't wasn't quite no. there. I, I'd like to see him if he explodes in the third preseason game. Boy, there might be a case for him. There might be he, a case for him. So my my gut right now is that he's going to be a practice squad guy. Just total guess. Um, I'm curious if Naylor makes the 53 because he he's the type of guy I think might not get through. Yeah. And the thing that's nice is this team has some serious depth there. Like I, I think that they're really stacked there. Um, so that that's good. The guy who I have a sneaky suspicion, and I don't think he's a perfect player, but I think he fits the defense really well, and I think he's going to play a huge role. And, and he qualifies here barely, but he, he does, and, and we've certainly discussed him a lot. Brian Asamoa. Linebacker looks like a safety. Mm -hmm. My God, he gets around. Like he is, I, I think he is the the energizer bunny type of player that this team wants exactly. I just have a sneaky suspicion in sub packages. That's right, I said it. Sub packages. I'll hit you with it. Football. Thank you. I, my suspicion is that this guy could contribute from day one. I really like him too. I, I think he was a it, really solid right, pick. Let's go get it. Yeah, let's go get it. Yeah, I agree with that. You can. One of those guys where you can just, when he was drafted, you're like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Well, he seems like an undersized linebacker on paper. Maybe he'll develop into something. And then you watch him on the field, in the system, even in practices. It's like, yes. oh, uh -huh. that's the vision. It's about speed, greasy, fast, <laughs> lightning, speed. Yep. Chasing chickens around. And he uh, the hits like a safety. Too. Like he yep. hits, too. Yep, I'm with you. Sam Hansen via the Scorner app says, my boss is a Vikings fan and saw the new Before I Die shirt that arrived that Judd's actually wearing right now. Immediately asked where he could get one. We will definitely have more available at some point. We're actually working on more of a comprehensive like, merch plan. Check out the hat, too. I like the hat a lot. A little Purple Daily Trucker hat I'm pretty hat discerning there. on hats, yeah, but I like this one. Jason Orlowski via the Scorner app says, hey, fellas, I listen to Purple Daily every friggin' day and would like to give my write that down. 
it's going to be an unofficial one for you here, Jason, because you, know, you got to be on the actual Wednesday. We can get you signed up. You send us a note. It says, a uh, little personal history first, though. In October, I'll be 50 years old. Feeling your pain, Judd. However, I do still have my appendix. I came, I came out of my mama crying get purple now. tears, which I'm certain came from shared DNA that I have with my dad. Both my folks were born and raised in Minnesota. Dad in Oatana, mom in New Ulm. Mom could give two poos about sports, but my dad, let's just say, I had to find the inner strength to talk him off the ledge after the 1998 debacle. My parents were and continue to be rocks in my life, but dad's consumption of all things Vikings, which in turn leads to my consumption of all things Vikings, may be the only parenting flaw I can think of. Anywho, been crying purple tears for 50 friggin' years. His unofficial write-that-down prediction is, Kirk Cousins will at some point this season get trapped within the confines of his plexiglass COVID cube and uh, nary a teammate or staff member will be able to find the key, which will force Nick Mullins to start. <laughs> and he refers to Nick Mullins with a nickname, Big Bleep Mullins. I love it. <laughs> it rhymes with Nick. <laughs> that that, that uh, Big Bleep Mullins will feed his inner Keenum and will lead the Vikings franchise to its first ever Super Bowl victory. Write yeah. that down. That's uh that's quite the tale. <laughs> yeah, I but think, I think you're guy. right. Like Mullins does have a, has a little bit more of a Keenum feel to him than oh, absolutely. Sean Mannion does. certainly has. One hundred percent. I I, be, I believe the Kirk Cave is gone. I believe the COVID Cave is gone now. Yeah, well, there's no restrictions, right? The NFL has wiped away no, all. They restrictions. don't care anymore. Yeah, don't if you're sick, you're sick. If you don't, if if Kirk gets sick and does not say a, a word, just keep playing now. Which he he could have done that, yeah, last absolutely. week or two Just weeks. Don't tell ago. anybody. Yeah, but he's a but he's a noble stand up teammate, and he wanted to make sure that uh, he did. They could do any any sort of uh, precautionary things needed. So, um, so there you go. There's your there's your feedback Friday here. Is there anything that you guys are in particular watching for in this third preseason game? I don't know. Like the only thing for me is I'm I'm curious to see a little bit more Austin Schlotman. I just want to know. Just like to know a little bit more about what the bailout plan is on Garrett Bradbury. I'm not totally sold that Austin Schlotman is the savior. I agree with that. Yes, that 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 concerns me, but that concerns me a lot for Week One, just when when the first team line has to start. Um, I think I my biggest thing is is the depth positions because I think there's pretty good competition. Uh, I'm curious about the depth at cornerback. I'm curious about is is Seen going to play? He got hurt and he's not practicing now. Uh, Booth has been out too, which isn't a terrible thing because you know is Boyd going to make this team? Um, there's certain guys at cornerback, so I think it's just the depth stuff. But beyond that, no. Beyond that, I have been completely now in today's game completely on the page of if you're not playing Kirk Justin. Thielen, that's fine. And as O'Connell said when asked about this yesterday on Thursday, and he's exactly right, too, how much are you really going to learn from, like, six plays? Like, that's my thing. You learn <laughs> way you, more in the joint practice and the scrimmage and you that say, you did yesterday. I agree. Exactly. And you can say, well, that scrimmage didn't go well. Kirk should play. Okay, but he's only going to play, like, four to six plays. Like, you're going to get nothing. It's It doesn't even come close to being worth the risk. Now, the, now we could we could talk about this, and, but this is old school. When you had four preseason games, Phil, in the third one, the starters played the entire first half, which was dangerous, but you learned something. But if you're going to play a guy for a series, to me, don't play him. I uh, I actually on on the wrap with Ricey episode of Mackie and Judd today when you were in transit uh, <laughs> trying to fix the internet gremlins problem that we had. Shouldn't have driven, but that's okay. I think I came up with a, a solution for how just lame the NFL preseason has become. Because you yeah. the, the, half the teams aren't playing starters, and like people still would like to go to the stadium and be entertained, and they're paying for tickets, and some of the tickets are part of a season ticket package and stuff. What if you just held joint practices inside U.S. Bank Stadium? What would what would stop them from doing a joint practice in front of fifty thousand fans, and then they could put up on the video board like, "Hey, this is the two minute drill for the next ten minutes," and right. 
Wouldn't that so be more entertaining for fans to watch and more game. valuable for the team anyways? So yeah. so a spring game for Run it for however you want. Two hours, yeah. run it however you want. I have no show, problem with drink, that. beer, whatever you want to do, you know? A- absolutely. And I think where we're going long term is is um joint practices, despite the fights, which by the way, you, they just have to get control of. Like, like you can't have Aaron Donald swinging his helmet or a helmet. Like that has to stop. That is but, terrifying, but, by the way. My yeah, but the Niners and Vikings were on were a blueprint for what you want, which is we're not going to to fight. There might be some pushing and shoving at times, uh, but cut the crap and let's get in work for our first team players. Um, I like that. I think where we're going within the next five years is this, and I don't love this, but I think it's the case. Joint practices, one to two preseason games, and eighteen regular season games. Yep. Like, like that's where this is headed. That's where they're trying to go to. So two preseason games. I don't games. like that, but yeah, the joint practices for the starters because you can customize or, everything. Or get one right preseason to- game, and but but you know what, Phil? This comes back to our idea. I think four years back, which is summer league. Summer league for the young players because that's mm-hmm. who you want to look at. I don't need to look at Kirk Cousins. Yeah. I love it. You, in summer league would be games. You play like three games in the middle of June or something, and then by the yep. time you get to training camp, now I don't know how the roster cuts would go, but at least you would know going into training camp. I love you this already idea. Played, played a bunch of games, you know. But uh, I would be much more interested as a fan showing up to a stadium to watch yes. a joint practice for yes. for two hours with starters running. Oh, so oh wow, so we're gonna get holy crap! It's just a barrage of red zone activity for the next fifteen minutes. This is great. Yep. It's just bang, bang, bang. You might not see a red zone play. If Kirk Cousins were to play on uh, in the third preseason game, which he will not, they right. might not even make the red zone because, you know, whatever. Like, they just might have a couple bad drives. They might not get to the red zone. Absolutely. But that would be much. I would pay more to watch that than a regular preseason game. There, we just fixed it. Just fixed preseason. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. But, yes, spring league games for young players. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Finish your point. My bad. <laughs> And then I was going to say, and then start training camp with with like seventy players instead of ninety. Yeah. So you don't start with with ninety bleeping players on the roster. Do you have anyway, any more I digress. any more things you want to add to this idea that we? No, I love this idea though. Okay. I'm very into it. Nice. Uh, tell the audience how they can lose weight this upcoming football season. Uh that that is as simple as this, my friends. Livia Weight Control centers and right now it is their anniversary sale and you can join the program for 50 percent off and now you're asking me okay judd that sounds great i'd like to shed some pounds what do i get i'm going to tell you right now i am a personal example um joined last september down 40 pounds and most importantly keeping that weight off dawn looked at me and she said sweetheart you look so good how can i lose weight and i said sweetie it's this simple you can join as well. She is down 16 pounds. Teamwork in the Zolgad household down 50 plus pounds. And again, I said it, anniversary sale going on right now, 50% off. This simple, 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A, Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A.com. As football season approaches and is now here, institute some teamwork in your own home. That's right your girlfriend, your boyfriend, husband, wife, get together and say, let's lose the weight together, Livia Deca. All right, that is a wrap on this Feedback Friday episode of Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die.